Hello, good morning and welcome to another, oh you can't see my head, I've just seen that. Hello, here I am down here. Give me one second, let me just correct this otherwise I'm going to be cut off for the majority of the morning. Let's try it like that. Oh, a little bit too high. You don't get this on Blue Peter, do you? Let's try. There we go. Much better. Good morning, everybody. Let's try this again. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Welcome to Wednesday, Wonder Wednesday, in association with the Great, great Science Share, uh, Dr. Chip's Daily Dose. It's lovely to see you all. I was just getting the technology there, and I could see you all waiting to come in. And we had over 100 people waiting to start today, which is absolutely amazing. Um, by the time I went to bed last night, yesterday's video um, where we uh, were doing Computational Thinking Tuesdays with all crazy characters had nearly a thousand views. Slimes now near, had over a thousand views from Monday. So it's, uh, it's wonderful to know that there are so many of you uh, through that camera there listening to me and following along and doing some computing, some science, some engineering projects each day. Just a reminder though, um, if it doesn't work for your parents or whoever's at home to tune in at 10, you can watch it at any point for the rest of the day. Um, so they might have done a timetable where you're doing maybe English or maths in the morning and science in the afternoon. So tune in then. But it is, it's great just to know that we've got so many people that are enjoying watching each day. So today it's Wonder Wednesday, the first um, of the Wonder Wednesdays in association with the Great Science Share. Now let me just tell you a little bit about the Great Science Share. I don't know why I keep saying Great Science. Uh, great Science Share. Go and Google it. It's a yearly annual event. Kind of started in Manchester and grew and grew and grew. It's now national and international. And it's all about encouraging you to do science investigations and experiments and ask good science questions. It's run um, from SERI, which is a little research hub around science and engineering education at the University of Manchester, which Dr. Lynn Bianchi heads up. There's a great gang of people there who are going to be helping me to uh, do this Wonder Wednesday over the next few uh, weeks. They're going to be uh, putting together the resources and the idea. Helen Spring there, Bryony and other members of the gang. Tina, hello everybody. Um, so uh, yeah, it's super. And, it's, and as I said, it's all about just refining your scientific questions. So each week, and we're just working out exactly how it's going to look, but I think we're going to do, or so I'm going to demonstrate a kind of simple experiment that you can do, and then your task is to go off and actually ask some scientific questions around it. So things like, well, if I changed this, then what would happen? You know, encouraging you to get curious about the science. Today, uh, we're going to be playing with um, paper helicopters, which are absolutely fantastic. I've just made one here. We should be able to see it go. There it goes. Off it goes. Um, and because it's an aviation-themed day today, I've got my aviation shirt on. I don't know if you can see that, one of my favourite shirts with all the, the vintage aircraft on them. So we'll come to that in a minute, um, but I'm getting into a bit of a uh, routine now in how we're running things. First things first, we need to do the register because it's, uh, it's been great to receive all of your work that you've been doing as you've been watching these videos. You've been sending it in to the email address which comes up at the end of this video is drchipsdailydose at gmail.com and also people have been emailing in there and saying can you give me a shout out, can you put my name on the register because I'm watching each day. So we've got a great register to go through today. So when you hear your name please say good morning sir. Uh, or good morning, Dr. Chips, so that um, we can check who we've got here. So first shout out, I want to say to Amy Welsh and her children as well, who sent me um, videos of them actually doing the pepper and experiment we did on Monday, looking at the properties of soap. I haven't been able to host the video on my website uh, just yet, because I had to do some upgrading and stuff, but I'm going to have it up there with the, uh, today, so you can see that. So I wanted them to give them a shout out. Mr. Warrior. Uh, Hamza Warrior, uh, pupil 
of mine and a good science friend as well. Yes, you are right about why we see pictures of road signs and traffic lights. And I'm going to come to that at the end of the day. But well done. You emailed me straight away yesterday and you got it spot on. Um, <clears throat> all of the children at Brox Hill Primary School in Lincolnshire, hello to all of you that are tuning in. And that hello comes from Daryush, Daryush and... Mitra, I hope I've said that correctly, Mum, because you did give me some guidance, but they've been following along, saw a great picture of them uh, doing the experiments we've been doing there on the blog, so thank you. Louis and Phoebe, who, and I work with your mum at Crumpsall Lane, I hope you are enjoying uh, the um, experiments we've been doing, so uh, hello to you. Charlie, Lily and Harry, uh, three mini Mr. P's. Mr. P, uh, Lee Parkinson is another teacher that I work with and we run courses for teachers and I really enjoyed seeing the pictures of your work from yesterday. So good morning to you on the register and good morning Kasim, good morning Usman as well to my year sixes and we've been chatting um, across another platform, uh, Discord, about the work that they've been doing and also to Billy um, and Bryony. Um, and Aidy, who were doing the slime experiment for Monday yesterday. So there we go. There's the morning register. Uh, hello to you all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you some of the highlights from the blog. Um, so uh, to show you the work that's been happening, let's jump on to my computer here and do this. There we go. So uh, showcase blog. Let me just do a whiz through. This is the crazy character from yesterday. So Tommy, very good, Tommy. Excellent. That was the one that you were following along from when I was reading out my algorithm. So we're learning about the importance of algorithms being nice and accurate and specific. There's the three little Mr. P's. Um, that's Charlie and Lily's work there, their algorithms. And the, the crazy characters they thought up. Yasmina from Year 6 in my class. Excellent detail. I had a good read through yours. And remember, I am going to be choosing two of the best. And uh, probably next, next week on Computational Thinking Tuesday, I'm going to read out the algorithm and get everybody to follow it. Here's Abdullah and Mustafa, um, who were tuning in. And they're crazy characters. Um, Abdullah, in, and in fact, both of them are excellent young computer scientists, helped partly because mum's a computer scientist. Um, so always enjoy chatting with them. Sophie, wonderful effort. Sophie, always smiling. Sophie uh, goes to our school as well. Excellent. Hassan, another Yasmina. These are all super crazy character algorithms. Um, Elise is one there. We've got Sakib and Mrs. Memon from my school as well, um, Benin, and this were the two uh, that wanted to say hello to everyone at Brox Hill Primary, um, Dayusha and Mitra, okay, um, Edith, great job Edith, Jess and Harry, fantastic crazy characters, there's just loads, it's brilliant, Rakea, Fatima, and Ab Abu Bakar, Abu Bakar, yep, um, Kasim, and love this one. This is Louis and Phoebe's. And uh, Louis actually typed up his um, crazy character algorithm uh, so to practice his ICT skills as well. So fantastic. Well done to everybody there. Let's go back to that camera. So this is what I'm going to sort of do each day in just sharing some of the work that's come in um, and then starting on today's experiment. So Today's experiment and the task for you, we're going we're gonna to look at these paper helicopters, paper spinners, and they're so, so easy to make, which is one of the great things about them. All you needed for today was some paper, a pen, scissors, uh, perhaps a ruler, but unfortunately I left my ruler upstairs and my wife is on an owl is now on an, an important work call and I can't sneak in the room and get it, but never mind. Um, and some different, maybe some cards and, and something to create a little bit of weight. So I, I said in the, on the website a paper clip, but it doesn't matter. I've used a bit of blue tack here or anything to create a little bit of weight. And when you make these, you can fly them. And you fly them just by either sort of throwing them up and letting them come down or just letting them go. I'm just going to let it go from here so I can control a little bit that it stays 
uh, within the Canva. And what you notice when you let them go, they spin, okay? And they slowly descend down, or fairly slowly descend down and spin, just like uh, kind of in the same way as a helicopter. Uh, a helicopter, if anyone's interested, can actually do something called an auto-rotation where it glides down like that. But um, I won't go into any more detail on that today. Um, so yeah, lovely little experiment. Now let me show you how to make these. Um, and I think when I was doing the session yesterday, I explained that sometimes um, you're going to be able to sort of follow along as I do it. And then other times... Um, it might be that you watch the video, understand what you're doing for the day, uh, and then uh, go away afterwards and rewatch the video. So I think today, if you've got all your equipment there ready in front of you, um, then you can follow along. I'll go at a nice, nice pace so you can follow along. Okay. So all you need to do first of all is take a piece of paper. Okay. We're going to start with an A4 piece of paper. And the, the piece of paper that we're going to make our, uh, let me just make sure that you can see this okay. Let's do it like that. There we go. The piece of paper that we're going to make our paper helicopter out of, it needs to be rectangular. Okay, so 490 degrees angles and two sides longer than the other two. But don't worry, you don't need to worry today about making things too exact. But we need something um, rectangular. So this obviously is rectangular, but I tend to like making them um, out of a slightly smaller rectangle. And what I find works quite well is if you fold an A4 piece of paper roughly into thirds. Okay, as I said, doesn't have to be exact. We can just roughly do it into thirds there. And then I'm going to cut along one of these. Uh, crease folds that I have made, cutting carefully. Please make sure as well if you're using scissors at home um, and you haven't got sort of safety scissors or anything like that, make sure you're working with a responsible adult at home. Okay, so we end up with a rectangle like so. So you can make them out of a whole sheet of paper because that's a rectangle. You can make them actually. In fact, I shouldn't just constrain you to rectangles. You can probably make them out of squares and other shapes, but let's just simplify things a little bit today. So here we are, we've got our rectangle. Now, all you need to remember to make a paper helicopter is three lines, okay? This is the simplest way to do it, three lines. The first line goes directly in the middle and it's a long line, and we do it in between the two longer sides, okay? Now, if you want to, and uh, this is a great thing to do, get your maths in here as well, measure the distance, okay, across um, your paper helicopter, divide it by two to find the exact middle, okay, uh, and do this a bit more accurately. As I said, unfortunately, my ruler's stuck up there. Uh, so, but it, and it doesn't matter, we can do this fairly roughly. They will still work, okay? So we're going to do a line like so, okay? Um, now, I've done it roughly sort of halfway, but as we start to explore these paper helicopters, you'll find that you can do longer lines, shorter lines there. This is good because this is going to make our two blades. And then what you need to do, our second and third line, really straightforward. We take them, take our paper helicopter, and we do one line in just past the end, not the whole way to the middle, just to about there, switch it round, there we go. Simple as that, three lines, three lines, oh no, that was lines, wasn't it? Um, so then we come to cut it out, again, really simple, just cut along the lines you have made, one, and two, and three. There we go. Okay, so three lines, long line down the middle on the longer side of the rectangle, two shorter lines into the middle. What you don't want to do 
is cut these lines in here to where this line finishes because all you'll do is cut a rectangle out. Okay, then the folding part is super simple. This part is going to make us a little body for a helicopter. So we just fold it in, fold it in. It doesn't matter if yours doesn't line up like mine there. As long as you just fold that up into a bit of a body, that is super. And then these are going to be our two helicopter blades. One of them has to be bent in one direction, like so. Fold it over. The other one is bent in the opposite direction. And then the final thing that we've got to do, and you don't always need this actually, they'll work without the weight, um, depending on uh, the size of your body. But I always like to add a little bit of weight. So I've got some blue tack here, just a tiny bit there like that. And I'm going to add that blue tack on. I might make a fold in that there. And then I can place that in there like so. And there we go. It's as simple as that. We have a paper helicopter. Okay, and that, let's see how this one flies. Oh, yes. Nice. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a quick video. Um, and this is, a, this is a, a wonderful video. It's a video of um, pupils out in Nepal taking part in the Great Science Show. So I said it's right around the world. Okay, so these are pupils across the other side of the world in Nepal, and they are having a go um, exploring paper helicopters um, as part of the Great Science Show. So we're going to watch this. It's about a minute or so. It's a lovely video. And then I'm going to talk to you about your task today and how we can actually do some science, ask some science questions about this and start to explore, well, what happens if I do this or I do that? Okay, so let's just watch the video and I will be back uh, with you in one minute. Blessings for your health, for your prosperity. Thank you very much. For your okay, so I hope you enjoyed that watching that video as much as I did. It's a lovely video. Uh, showing how much um, enjoyment and excitement the children were having there in exploring the science of these helicopters. Now, can I just say as well, in that video, um, to fly their helicopters from quite a height, a few of the children were throwing them out, out of an upstairs window. Um, please do not do that unless you speak to your parents and they say you can do it, because that might be a little bit... Uh, dangerous but I think in the video they were just so excited they wanted to see how high they could get their helicopters to fly and in that video you might have heard that one of the girls in the video was asking some scientific questions she was wondering whether or not if she made a bigger helicopter if I made a bigger helicopter would it fall quicker hmm that's a great scientific question 
Because a good scientific question is one where you can test it to find out the answer. So this is your task for today. I want you, and you can watch the video back if you need to remember how to make one of these, I want you to make, have a go at making your paper helicopters, okay, and then, that one does fly really well, uh, then I want you to ask your own scientific question, investigate it, and send in what you found out, okay, so the usual email, doctorchips, daily dose at gmail.com. So, give you some examples. Well, I might say, if I change the length of the blades, will it spin quicker? So I'm choosing something to change and I'm investigating what effect it has on something else. So let's, let's try that. Okay, so um, let's have a look. So now this is a bit tricky one because I'm going to have to try and judge how quickly it's spinning. Maybe you could think of a better way of um, measuring how quickly it's spinning. But I'm going to shorten the blades like so. And let's see. See, it is quite difficult to uh, to measure that. Do you know what I think? I what I think I could do though, if I uh, had a phone or my parents had a phone with slow mo mode on, maybe I could film it and actually count how many uh, revolutions it goes as it falls. Um, so, but that's one science question I could have a go at trying to answer, or I could say perhaps if I added more weight. To the bottom will it fall quicker okay uh, so let's try doing this in fact let's go for a lot more weight there we go because now I'm just asking these questions I'm being scientifically curious and I'm doing some simple tests just to find out if there's a bit of a pattern here so let's try this oh interesting did you see that or did it go too quick okay so this is what I want you to do today. Now, over the next few weeks in these Wonder Wednesdays, we're going to talk more about these kind of types of experiments you can do. And um, if you do Google uh, the Great Science Show and go onto their website, then there are there's some there's some help more for your kind of parents, perhaps, or teachers, um, or parents that would normally sorry normally for teachers, but it might be for your parents. Uh, if you're watching with your parents as well, they've got some guidance on asking really good scientific questions. But as a starter today, I just want you to get exploring. Make yourself a paper helicopter. Think of a scientific question. Maybe if I made it out of card, would it fly? Would it take less time or more time to hit the ground? Would it fly quicker, slower? Whatever it might be. Test it out and let me know what you found out. Okay, so enjoy that. Now, just before I finish, I need to tell you, because I've had lots of people emailing in about this. So yesterday I said to you, as a little thing to make you think at the end of the day, have you or have your parents or whoever's watching in the last few years ever seen one of these and thought uh, when you're signing up for things and had to and you thought, I wonder why they always want me to identify things like traffic lights or road signs. What? Why? Now, Mr. Warrior, Hamza Warrior, year six, okay, emailed me straight away. Lots of people are emailing me saying, yes, I've seen them, but I don't know what they're being used for. But uh, Hamza told me straight away that the data from this, and, he's, and he is completely correct, is actually being used to train these. These are self-driving cars from a company called Waymo, which is part of Google. Uh, and they're on the roads now over in Phoenix, I believe it is, Arizona. And what the, uh, these use something called AI and machine learning. And the way that AI and machine learning works in a very, very uh, quick explanation, and I hope I get this right because I'm not an expert, but I find it fascinating. You basically have to show the computer loads of images of something and then it will itself start to recognize uh, the things in the images because it spots patterns. Patterns is a great computational thinking skill being able to spot patterns. So we'll come back to this I'm sure on a Tuesday. But if you show it enough traffic lights that computer will then essentially learn 
to spot traffic lights. So that's why over the last few years, when you've been trying to sign up for things, you might have seen things like this. Because the data from this, so when you select the traffic lights, Google takes those images and they know they're traffic lights because you've told them that they are, and it uses those to train its cars. So there you go. So well done, Hamza. You are spot on. You knew about that. Uh, he's really into his tech and his science. Um, you were aware of that. Now, another little puzzle just to leave you for today, kind of linked to what we've been doing. Okay. This is a little puzzle for you. Here, uh, imagine that I have a bowling ball and imagine that I have a feather and they are in a vacuum, so there is no air. Okay, there's no air. If I drop them and I release them at exactly the same time, which would hit the ground first and why? Okay, and it might be a bit of a trick question saying which will hit the ground first. There we go, I'm going to leave it at that. So if you know the answer to that, get in contact with me, uh, docchipsdailydose at gmail.com. Let me know and I will reveal the answer to that one tomorrow. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed today's Daily Dose. If you want to be kept up to date with all of the activities that are going to be happening each week, go onto the website and uh, subscribe with the email address. Get your parents to subscribe then I will send them an email on a Sunday telling them everything they need for the week ahead. I will see you tomorrow where we're going to be making our own robotic arm and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.